educative and interactive. authorities towards improving the welfare of both serving and retired personnel of the Nigerian police force. President Buhari tasked Nigeria place on emerging internal security challenges inaugurates a building to address welfare of personnel. IGP orders immediate deployment of anti-riot squad to restore order nationwide as prominent Nigerians appeal to violent NSAS protesters to trust federal government's this BIG intervention. provides a win-win situation for both Nigeria and the investors in the oil industry in Nigeria. Plus. Legislative intervention on opening up oil and gas sector advances with consideration of petroleum industry at Senate. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in for the Network News at 9 on the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Ian Ray John. Dotsun Ogiemi in our Lagos studio reads with me tonight. Welcome. Security is on the front burner tonight as the Nigeria Police Force has been tasked to sustain efforts at fighting and addressing the emerging internal security challenges confronting the country for sustainable peace and prosperity. President Muhammadu Buhari threw the challenge while at the virtual inauguration of the new head office building of the Nigeria Police Pensions Limited. State House correspondent Eda Musambu has details. Through physical discipline as well as encouraging patronage of local firms, the Nigeria Police Pensions Limited achieved this magnificent and befitting head office complex in line with his vision of being the benchmark in pension fund administration in the country. The edifice is the first to be purpose built by any pension fund administrator in Nigeria and therefore a significant milestone for the nation's pension industry. In order to fully accomplish the purpose of setting up the scheme, I urge the Nigerian Pension Commission, the police authorities, and Nigerian Police Force Pensions Limited to maintain their concerted efforts, especially towards achieving improved welfare for the police personnel. Let me commend the Nigerian Police Force for fighting and addressing the emerging internal security challenges President Buhari also applauded the Nigeria Police Pensions Limited for instituting a retirees resettlement support scheme towards providing desired assistance to retired police officers to enable them to resettle fully in retirement after meritoriously serving the nation. Taking your services to the doorstep of police officers by maintaining an office in each police command and formation is also very laudable. I urge you to continue your entire efforts in collaborating with the police authorities towards improving the welfare of both serving and retired personnel of the Nigerian police force. May I, therefore, assure the Nigerian police of our continuous support to them in that regard. The Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Maigari Dingyadi, cut the ceremonial tape to formally declare the Nigeria Police Pension House opened on behalf of the President. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. In the meantime, the Inspector General of Police has remarked that the establishment of Police Trust Fund and the subsequent ascent to the Nigerian Police Act 2020 is repositioning the Nigeria Police Force before its publics while prioritizing officers' welfare. It also gives assurance of better life after service to the officers. There is a renewed impetus to render quality service that will guarantee improved welfare to all serving police officers and retirees in line with your excellency's vision. The commissioning of this edifice today, therefore, represents a great milestone and an eloquent testimony 
of our desire to cater for the welfare of police personnel and their families with dignity and also pursue vigorously our vision to be one of the leading pension fund administrators in the country. The newly inaugurated police pension building is planned to meet the present and future needs of the police pension. Following increasing attacks, including acts of arson and malicious damage of uh, public and private facilities that is recorded in some states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered immediate nationwide deployment of anti-riot police units, the Police Mobile Force, PMF, to protect lives and property of all Nigerians and secure critical national infrastructure across the country. A statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, the CP Frank Oba, the IGP also ordered massive deployment of police operatives to strengthen security around correctional facilities nationwide. Consequently, the commissioners of police in the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT are to identify and isolate lawbreakers from peaceful protesters. Immediately, arrest and diligently prosecute such perpetrators of violence in their prospective, prospective commands. The Inspector General of Police calls on members of the public to avail the police with useful information that can lead to the re-arrest of the fleeing inmates unlawfully released from correctional facilities. He advised parents and guardians to prevail on their children and wards to steer clear of acts of violence and criminality as the force will henceforth exercise the full powers of the law to prevent any further attempt on lives and property of citizens. Two weeks into the nationwide NSAS protest, rising cases of attacks on national assets and infrastructure, including human lives, have continued. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga has an update of the unfolding event across the country. Two white movement, which is tagged NSAS protest, began by a few youth in Asaba Delta State following the alleged killing of a young man by unit of the disbanded special anti robbery squad and other several police brutality carried out by unit of the force. After about two weeks of peaceful demonstration, happenings in the last 24 hours indicate that the protests may have been hijacked by hoodlums, leading to destruction of lives and property in some parts of the country and subsequent declaration of curfew in Lagos State to manage the crisis. Reports from Lagos and other states show that police commands and outposts, including vehicles, were attacked while officers and men of the force have continued to live in apprehension following threats on their lives. In Abuja, Najar Tutijani and Rosemary Bila report that calmness has returned after alleged hoodlums took advantage of the peaceful protest to maim people and destroy valuables worth millions of naira. From Abakele Kebon State, Kingsley Okoro reports that Governor David Omai assures protesters of consideration of their demands and adequate compensation for victims of brutality. Demanded for judicial manner of inquiry. Similarly, from Port Harcourt Rivers State, Kingsley and Maji reports that group of youths has embarked on a peaceful campaign seeking an end to the series of NSAS protests and aligned itself with federal government proposed to reforms aimed at repositioning operations of the force. Our five demands have been given speedy attention. It is therefore important to plead with the youths that we give the government some time to further expand on their actions. Other reports across the country indicate that the protest is relatively peaceful with less tension in areas where the protest was carried out. Benue and Nasra states have inaugurated committees to look into alleged cases of police brutality and bring perpetrators to justice and urge citizens to remain calm as their demands will be carefully looked into. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. And still on the protest, the Lagos state government imposed a 24-hour curfew as part of measures to check the rising cases of violence by hoodlums in Lagos. With this measure notwithstanding, protesters continued with their demonstration until security operatives arrived and the scenario changed. Details of this report will be brought to you in the course of the bulletin. Niger Nigeria's top government officials and the diplomatic community are concerned about developments in the 
ongoing NSAS protest, which is uh, creating chaotic scenes in some parts of the country. At a meeting at the instance of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Nigeria reiterates her worry with the way and manner the movement has been used by some persons with different motives to destabilize the country. Usman Ali reports. It is a calm atmosphere, but the meeting here is a serious one. Nigeria wants her diplomatic partners to understand her response as a government which value freedom of expression of her citizens, particularly the youth, who are challenging police brutality in a movement which began as NSAS protests in the country. We, we embrace uh, Nigerians uh, speaking their mind and, um, you know, because uh, we as a government are here to serve the people and to listen uh, to the people. And our president, President Mohamedou Buhari, uh, believes in that and, uh, and has asked us also uh, to believe and to implement uh, that. As some will say, the voice of the voiceless. And the government has respected that. It is my intention to appeal to all the youths of Nigeria, both in Nigeria and in the diaspora, to please give peace a chance. But the concern of the government is that the agitation is transforming to violence. Protesters are not hindered as long as they do not constitute a danger two other people. Sunday night, the central bank was taken over. It was almost set on fire. We don't see that as part of a peaceful demonstration. The attack on the governor of Oshun State that went there to engage them, we don't see that as part of a peaceful organization. No, uh, organization. So we just want to assure the, uh, the Tumai committee that we will continue to obey the rule of law. Democracy will continue to thrive. It is not part of freedom to break open prison, to ban police stations, to destroy public order, to block roads and cause mayhem. The diplomatic community are also asking for more engagement with the youth to address issues of their concern. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTNU. Similarly, the Northern Elders Forum, elder statesmen and civil society organizations are calling for an immediate stop to the ongoing protests to end SARS nationwide. As it appears, the goal of the protest has been subverted by several interest groups threatening the security of the nation. Momso Demian Dati has a compilation of this appeal. Alarmed by the violent tone, the peaceful protest is now taken. The Northern Elders Forum believe other interests have now taken over the once peaceful protest by young and genuine Nigerian youths to express their grievances. The forum believes unless the protest ends immediately, every law-abiding citizen, including genuine protesters who are pursuing legitimate goals will be endangered. The forum appeals to the federal government to protect innocent citizens and honor its commitment to serious changes and the manner it handles security, while appealing to leaders at all levels to take steps to douse tension and stop the nation from plunging into deeper crisis. The national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Asiwaji Bola Tinubu, is appealing to the NSAS protesters who have made their points clear to call off the protest and allow the government implement their demands. Bola Tinubu in a statement noted that the vigor and vibrancy of the protest are indications of the growing strength of the democratic culture in Nigeria and a demonstration of the beauty of democracy, its promotion and protection of people's power. However, the protesters, he said, must be careful not to set the stage for the destruction of the same democratic process that gives them the freedom and right to protest in the first place. Meanwhile, the Iberi Emeri Okori and Oni En Incha, the tent of Elemi in River State, Apollos Chu, is also calling on youths to end the protest, especially now that hoodlums have infiltrated the movement, burning up cars and freeing prisoners a step away from anarchy 
and his opinion. The king, in a statement, noted that since the federal government has taken a listening ear to their demands, the only wise thing to do is to withdraw from the roads and give the government time to get to work in delivering on their demands. In a related development, the National Orientation Agency is also appealing to end SARS campaigners to cease the protests and allow government time to implement decisions taken in response to their demands. In a special appeal to the youth, the Director General of N. OA, Dr. Gerba Abari says the campaigners have made their point. Hence, for the sake of peace, we draw and not give miscreants a chance to unleash mayhem on innocent Nigerians. And from the Network for Democracy and Development also comes an appeal for the youth to give peace a chance and help rebuild the nation on a stronger foundation. A statement from NDD commended the federal and state government for the proactive step in meeting the demands of the youth and called for ethical reform where the society will get its values rife and tackle the myriad of challenges confronting it. And now I have with me in the studio to give some perspectives to the NSAS Protestant Development a security expert, Kabir Adamo. Welcome to Network News. Thank you. Good evening. All right. Uh, looking at the NSAS protests, obviously it has uh, gone uh, beyond the hands of the protesters. What is the security implication of this and what should the government be doing now? Um, the clear implication of this is that if we allow it, it will degenerate into a state of an anarchy. Um, unfortunately, um, protests uh, uh, have lives, uh, as it were. They have a cycle and um, sometimes they start small and they, along the way they pick up other security challenges like what we are seeing. It's very likely that apart from the, pro the protesters themselves, other groups have cashed in on the protest and the result is what we are seeing. Um, virtually almost all parts of the country today uh, had one or the other form of clashes between you know, uh, the protesters and then other groups that were either trying to st stop them or cash in on the protest to create their own situation. And the unfortunate uh, circumstances that our economy is suffering the livelihoods of people, their day-to-day -day activities is being affected. I'm sure even the protesters did not anticipate this when they, when they started. So we are faced with a situation, unfortunately, of anarchy if this is allowed to continue. Looking at the point we are now, the level of uh, destruction, arson and maiming is uh, alarming. How and why uh, did we get to this point? Um, mainly because in the first place, the, the police that was meant to provide um, you know, internal security is the, as it were, the target, target of okay. the protest. And so um, I guess in, in a way it was incapacitated. But the other major thing, and which is what I would like to call on government to look into critically, is the failure of our intelligence capability. Um, over time, uh, unfortunately, I think we've allowed the intelligence capabilities that we have to, to suffer. Uh, and it may be as a result of perhaps some other more pressing issues. COVID-19 has not helped the matter. In particular, the Office of the National Security Advisor, I think there is a need to empower that, that, that office. I say this because we're dealing with a modern um, enemy, quote and unquote. Uh, yes, the youths are protesting for a genuine cause, which is police reform, but they are using means, means that are not open to us. Um, so it's social media, the dark web, there is a need for government surveillance capabilities to be able to look into those areas and understand how this movement is being organized. And the only way to do that is through surveillance capability. All right, beyond the surveillance capability, as, an, as a security expert, what would be your advice you know, to government and even citizens on how we can actually uh, douse the tension at the moment? Um, two major things, um, proactive engagement, so identify all stakeholders, including the youth and uh, religious leaders, traditional rulers, everybody. In and then, of course, the whole of government at the federal level, the state level, and the community level, and do proactive engagement. The second one is strategic communication, where you show empathy. It's very, very important. When you speak, you show empathy. The second one, you build confidence. Okay. And in that regard, build, come up with a framework for implementation of the police reform. That is clear. And then the last one is provide hope for the, the youth. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Kabir, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. You're watching the Network News on DNTA. Up ahead, more appeal for end-to-end -end South protests and a law suit. Details in the second part of tonight's news.
present genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and in some cases, extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and livelihoods of our people. We will also ensure that all those responsible for misconduct or wrongful acts are brought to justice. We also deeply regret the loss of life of the young men in Ohio State during the recent demonstrations. I have directed that the circumstances of his death should be thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of men and women of the police force are hardworking and diligent in performing their duties. The few bad eggs should not be allowed to tarnish the image and reputation of the force. of your money, our team of expert fund managers invested wisely and actively to make sure your money is always working as hard as you do. After all, the things we're building today can help shape your future in the long run. And with the right partner by your side, the one thing you're sure to do is so. Premium Pension. Active today, premium tomorrow. We don't must reach Abby. Okay. Guys, the mechanic is almost here. Ah, madam. <laughs> what do you think is wrong? Ah, ah, madam, not be smart to worry. What is this your bike? Oh, carburetor and radiator. You don't pavuka. If you want fixer, a fifty thousand. I guess I have no choice. Give me size ten Allen Q. Don't spoil now. You need to buy new one. New one at 16,000. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll be on my way now. Parenting your tools. Completely. Days where we have conversations without a mask on. Days where we can look back and say we never gave up. 
because of our courage and will to keep going. This is where hunger plans will be made and kept. This is where we can gather without fear. This is where we can walk and play with friends. This is where we're not isolated from our community by fear. So join us. Join us. Join us. As we raise the glass. Thank you for staying. We're still talking security as hoodlums this evening invaded the Ado State Command of the Nigeria Customs Service on the Adowa axis of the Benin Aochi Highway, cutting away seized goods. Good luck, Inaini reports that the 24 hour curfew imposed by the state government did not stop people and vehicles from moving freely, while some youths mounted barricades at strategic junctions. Just a few vehicles and people on the streets moving freely. From the city center to the outskirts, there is no security presence. Some youths are seen at strategic junctions mounting obstacles. <laughs> Markets, business districts, and offices are closed in compliance to the 24-hour curfew. Also, the debris from the bonfires of Monday are visible on major and link roads in the metropolis. The state government in a statement this Tuesday has warned residents to stay indoors as the 24-hour curfew subsists and is active to further notice. It has also set up a judicial panel of inquiry in response to the yearnings of the youths as articulated in the demands of the NSAS protesters. In Benin, Agatha Eguari Oju, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Senate has called on the NSAS protesters to stop any form of street protest in order to give government opportunity to carry out their demands, as further disturbances might jeopardize the good intentions of government. National Assembly correspondent Damiali reports that House of Representatives also called for an executive order in relation to police brutality. The motion of urgent public importance moved by Senator Biodun Olujimi and supported by all senators called on President Muhammad Buhari to address the nation on the ongoing protests and for the federal government to carry out the demands of the protesters while the Inspector General of Police should carry out a holistic reform of the Nigerian police force. Our youths, our children, to kindly, in the interest of everyone, suspend their actions and embrace genuine dialogue. Mr. President, what we have today right now is that the very lofty, the very genuine, the, 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 the very good motivated actions of our children is being hijacked. For the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to look at the issues, address the nation on them. I urge the federal government to faithfully and comprehensively implement all the five demands of the NSAS movement and protesters with necessary timelines to reduce, to rekindle confidence in government. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against any day. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has passed a resolution calling on the president to issue an executive order to address some broader issues of police brutality. This is equal to a matter of urgent public importance on the need to address the possible breach of national security on the peaceful protests across the country. The issue raised by Representative Saida Soli after more than two hours of closed-door session by the House saw the lawmakers appealing to protesters to have faith in the National Assembly and the Executive as they collectively find solutions to lingering issues of police brutality. That the continuous protests across the country have inflicted and told hardship on other Nigerians pursuing their legitimate livelihoods. We refer to certain sections that would be retooled by this parliament of the constitution to make people personally responsible and liable for the inauspicious actions or acts of brutality and at her committee will also be constituted by the House to engage relevant security agencies, other key agencies and interest groups to ensure peaceful end to the protests. House Speaker Femi Gbajabiamila says 
the compensation to those who suffered police violence and brutality in the last two decades, welfare for personnel of the Nigeria Police Force, and reasonable demands of ASU should be included in the 2021 budget. I will support the amendment of the Constitution to ensure that the provisions of fundamental human rights have teeth, resource control is dealt with equitably, and that the next generation of Nigerians does not Nigerians will not inherit evident dysfunctions of our current system. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. A concerned citizen, Mr. Adamu Garba, has filed one billion dollars suit against the chief executive officer and founder of Twitter International Company, Jack Dorsey, at the Federal High Court, Abuja, over alleged sponsorship of the ongoing NSAS protest across the country. The suit was filed by counsel to Mr. Adamu Garba, which is challenging the legality of Jack Dorsey, Twitter International Company, sponsorship of the NSAS protesters, which he claims is a violation of his fundamental right to liberty, dignity of human person, freedom of movement and economic right guaranteed and protected under the Constitution. The applicant seeks an order of perpetual injunction restraining the respondents, whether by themselves or by their officers, agents, servants, privies, from further sponsoring and staging the NSAS protest or any protest in any other manner whatsoever as that infringes on his fundamental rights as guaranteed by the Constitution and Articles of the African Charter on Human Rights. The Attorney General of the Federation, National Security Advisor, Inspector General of Police, Director General of Department of State Service, the Commandant General, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Nigeria Communication Commission have been listed as respondents. The case is yet to be assigned to a judge. In other news, Senate has commenced the consideration of the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020, which seeks, among other issues, the consolidation of all laws regulating the oil and gas sector into a single legislation. The bill, which has uh, passed second reading, is also aimed at transforming the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation into an incorporated commercial entity. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unko reports. On the 29th of September 2020, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, announced the transmission of the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020 from the executive. 22nd days after the oldest bill in Nigeria took its first step in the Ninth Senate, it has passed second reading for the fourth time. It seeks to provide legal framework for efficient corporate governance of the industry, ensure consolidation of its management, and improve development funding for host communities. The fact that the industry can no longer meet the aspirations of government and key stakeholders, nor can it match the pace of development of the global oil and gas industry or market. No Nigerian company have done exploration. We must give opportunity for Nigerian companies to be able to do exploration on their own. It's a very herculean task for ordinary people to protect oil facilities. And we are talking about 2.5%. 2.5% of uh, uh, the OPEC, that is the, the operational expenses of the settler uh, company. Mr. President, this is inadequate. The petroleum industry bill is also expected to address inadequacies in the fiscal regime of the sector which will then enhance revenue accruable to the federal government. Senators were explicit that the bill will domesticate the sector's entire value chain and give Nigeria full control of the industry. With a law like this, I'm sure when the investors come in, we should be talking of having over 50 billion barrels in reserves uh, because the enhancement of that sector will further go to create revenues for government. We must ensure that this bill, this PIB, provides a win-win situation for both Nigeria and the investors in the oil industry in Nigeria. The bill now awaits input from stakeholders through public hearing as the Senate has adjourned plenary to 24th of November 2020 to enable standing committees conduct 2021 budget defense for ministries, departments and agencies of government. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Unquo, NTN News. Indigenous companies in Nigeria have continued to deepen their activities in the oil and gas sector with the signing into law of the Nigerian Local Content Act. 
Minister of State for Chilam Resources, Timmy Pre Silva, who visited Lee Engineering and Construction Limited in Delta State, says the federal government will intensify partnerships with indigenous companies across the oil and gas value chain. Lydia Samson reports. Until now, oil and gas sector operations in Nigeria were dominated by foreign firms. The narrative has since changed with the introduction of the local content, necessitating the visit by the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Timmy Pre Silva, to Delta State on a visit to Lee Engineering and Construction Company. During this hour, the minister and his entourage commended the organization for what he called quality facilities and justification of government local content that Nigerian companies will excel when given a level playing ground. They started by supplying and they've now graduated to the point where they are beginning to produce and to build factories and that is where Nigeria has to get to. We completely support them and whatever we can do as government to support the growth of Lee Engineering will be done. Managing Director, Lee Engineering and Construction Company, gave a dozier of the company, stressing that the ultra-modern manufacturing and fabrication workshop under construction will manufacture tanks, pressure vessels, as well as other oil and gas equipment when operational. We have trained a lot of people, invest a lot of money in training, a lot of money in the technology transfer. So the place needs to be fully uh, utilized by the government. And as long as the, the country is an uh, oil producing country, I don't see any reason why we will not be patronized. He assured that the facility will be completed in seven months and is expected to be inaugurated by President Muhammadu Buhari in Abuja, Lydia Samson, NGA News. And away from the oil and gas sector, the House of Representatives has uh, decried the alleged freezing of bank accounts by the Central Bank of Nigeria, which, according to intelligence, has made foreign investors skeptical. National Assembly correspondent Lamiali reports that the House says eroding investors' confidence is inimical to efforts of growing the economy. The alleged freezing of bank accounts, says Representative Magbila, who tabled the issue on the matters of urgent public importance, violates constitutional provisions. The House is concerned about the plethora of petitions in recent times about the untold hardship and poverty they are experiencing from extended freezing of their personal, corporate, and other accounts by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The House is also to investigate the abandonment of Oweri Abar Road as moved by Representative Nkena Ngechiri, just as entire members of the House of Representatives called for humanitarian support to all states of the Federation that suffered losses due to flooding. Meanwhile, a bill to repeal Insurance Act sponsored by Representative Darlington Ngokocha, a bill to amend National Health Insurance Act sponsored by Mohammed Shumsuddin, and a bill to establish National Assembly Library Trust Fund passed second reading. The ongoing recapitalization process of the insurance industry will be anchored on a modern and robust insurance regulatory framework that meets current international best practice. Healthcare is a matter of national security and a means to enhance human capital. In a bid to realize this vision, it has become pertinent to create and establish a National Assembly Legislative Library Trust Fund. The House has adjourned plenary to 24th November 2020 to enable budget defense by ministries, departments, and agencies of government. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. The Industrial Training Fund, ITF, is supporting modalities in place to boost capacity of graduates from tertiary institutions across Nigeria in line with the federal government's intention to reposition the youths for maximum efficiency in the country's labor market. This was disclosed by the Director General, ITF, Joseph Ari, during the 14th National Biennial Conference of Student Industrial Work Experience Scheme, Cyrus, Chimobi, Water, Unaji, reports. With an increasing number of students graduating annually from Nigerian institutions, the need to ensure proper training of students with requisite skills to confront the challenges of contemporary society is a concern of the Industrial Training Fund. 
The fund in 2019 alone disbursed 2.94 billion naira as student and supervisory allowances, out of which 1.6 billion naira was for students from 325 tertiary institutions across the country. This year's biennial conference of students' industrial work experience scheme with the theme Implementation of CUS in the New World Order, Roles and Responsibilities of Stakeholders is aimed at highlighting the need for students to key into the new normal occasioned by the global pandemic to ensure Nigerian graduates are abreast of global best practices. What these demands of us is to adapt the implementation of the scheme to what many consider the new normal. Another fallout of the pandemic is soaring unemployment. Since the pandemic, numerous companies have either rationalized their workforce or completely closed shop. Institutions can synergize to provide the needed training skill acquisition research and community, uh, community engagement efforts towards improving the country's human resources already thereby boosting economic activities. The virtual meeting is targeted at stakeholders from all sectors of the economy to raise concerns of training a new generation of graduates. In Abuja, Chimubi, Walter Naji, NTA News. It's time for another break. More reports in a bit. This day. Mr. President said the youth of this country have spoken, and he has heard, and he has since gone to work for the youth of our country. Not just as a president, but even as, as a father of the younger generation. The real Nigerian youth is a patriot, not a tool of destabilization. Mr. President made an appeal to the Nigerian youth that this protest, wherever held, should be done in a peaceful manner. The Nigerian youth should be on their guard to make sure that elements that will infiltrate and distract them from the very purpose of their protest should be prevented from doing so. Listen to the voice of reason. Better days. <laughs> Better days are coming. Days where we can hug each other tightly. Days where we don't have to stay home to learn. Days where we can laugh together freely businesses can recover completely. Days where we have conversations without a mask on. Days where we can look back and say we never gave up because of our courage and will to keep going. Days where hangar plans will be made and kept. Days where we can gather without fear. Days where we can walk and play with friends. Days where we're not isolated from our community by fear. So join us. Join us. Join us. As we raise the glass to better days. Isa to like football on Top Go TV. So they in for guess he in the best man for a party wedding. Amaka disappoint a bobo all because of football. Kola and the family supposed come out. Then gas change plans because for this new football season, Go TV get correct football action. We make sense. Get Go TV decoder. We come with one month Go TV Max subscription for only 9,500 naira. Go TV. Live it. Love it. My name is Nandok Jamda. Muhammad. Stevitan. Hussein Musa. Roguna Joel Tinji. Sayyid Musa. John. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than eight years now. And I said that plantain. Nakai Kimami Shekara Uku. I'm 
I've been selling my tomatoes for about 10 years now, and I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. Now, when the salad, the money, 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 the as you can see, I'm a technician and I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. Peugeot Automobile Nigeria is to undergo restructuring with a view to turning around the fortunes of the company within the next three years. Ahmed Wadada Aliu, Ali, the new executive chairman of the company, stated this on assumption of office in Kaduna. Haruna Mohammed reports. With $150 million investment, the new executive chairman says he will focus on retooling and upgrading the company's assembly line in tandem with the realities of the 21st century. Uh, the injection of funds that I mentioned earlier will uh, see to the not only realization or introduction of uh, uh, low and medium level vehicles, but... Um, We'll see to uh, higher turnover of production by, by PAN. The new executive chairman says his administration will emphasize the observation of strict compliance to corporate governance protocol, business transparency and efficiency while holding work ethics in high esteem. Turnover of production entails recruitment of both uh, high level, medium, uh, and, and low level uh, uh, human capital, I mean, employees, so to say. So, and uh, of course, uh, repositioning plan means resuscitating uh, dead dealerships or distributorships, and those that are not really but those that are in comatose. Peugeot Automobile Nigeria is established in the 70s as Nigeria's pioneer vehicle assembly company. It has had its highs and lows, but the new management is optimistic about bringing back the glory of the automobile company. In Kaduna, I am Haruna Mohamed, NTA News. Similarly, four local inventors of an aircraft have uh, had the privilege to examine the process of building and maintaining world-class aircraft. This dream come true opportunity was given to the inventors by the Madrin Air Force in Kaduna. Abdullahi Mohammed reports. It was a show of talent to the people of Ilori in Kwara State on Independence Day that caught the attention of the chief of the air staff. Now the four boys have a huge future. The Nigerian Air Force foremost innovation center, aircraft maintenance hangar, and UAV building centers have thrown their doors open for them. The best hands within each of the centers given them dossiers of the latest technology in building aircraft. These, the chief of the air staff in a message, says will spur them to challenge their shortcomings and make their dreams come true. The Nigerian Air Force, under the able leadership of the chief of the air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abraka, is willing, able, and ready to assist you. For the young inventors, it was a golden opportunity that advances their scope of knowledge and are keen about utilizing any kind of offer for skill acquisition from the Nigerian Air Force. If they will be offering us and forging our education, we will really appreciate and we will take the offer. High point for the young inventors was a ride in one of the aircraft at the Air Force Flying School. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. Heading to Bruno now, Minister for Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn, has reassured of efforts at releasing the remaining Chibok schoolgirls in captivity. The minister gave the assurance when she visited Governor Babagana Umar Azalam at the government house, Midugri, following her visit to Chibok community, where she interfaced with the parents of the abducted schoolgirls. Mohammed Goni reports. Minister for Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Tallinn, who described her visit to Chibo community as successful but emotional said. The release of the over 100 girls has brought joy to the families. However, lamented that a significant number of the girls are still being held in captivity. We have a few prayers that God will bring an end to this matter. I 
and also touch their hearts so that we'll be able to get back our daughter Sada in captivity. The minister also commiserated with Governor Zilum over the terror attack on his convoy, leading to loss of gallant police personnel and the demise of the Emir of Biu. Governor Wagana Omara thanked the minister for identifying with the state in his trying moment, and further appreciated her visit to Chubok and the sympathizing with him over the recent happenings. The minister has working the child the right hands. And also, we The governor said law is underway to make the girl child education compulsory in the state. In Maiduguri, Mohamed Gwani, NTN News. Diligent service to God and dedication to the growth of the house of God has its rewards. The Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, His Grace Ignatius Kegama, emphasized this at the induction of the chairman of Chida Hotels International, Gabriel Agada, as Papal Knight, the highest rank in knighthood. Kelvin Evwonaye reports. He has supported the church in many ways, be it in evangelism or helping to build the house of God, including assistance for the training of priests. This he has done for years, and those efforts have not gone unnoticed. Upon the recommendation of the Archbishop, the chairman of Chida Hotels International, Gabriel Agada, has been awarded Papa Knight by Pope Francis. And this is just a token to us to show that if we work hard, God will recognize us on earth and he will recognize us in heaven. For the Agadas family, nothing is too much to give to God or humanity. This honor done them by the Pope will reinforce their faith in God and strive to do more for the church. It's of encouragement to us and every Christians that are living after us. And uh, it is also of emulation for the children to also see and then bring themselves close to God. Because of the level of his commitment to the church activity, so it's not a surprise to me. It's, um, the award is well deserved. Gabriel Agada was among the 18 parishioners of the Catholic Diocese of Abuja, honored by Pope Francis with Papa Knight at a well-attended mass. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTN News. In other news, the Federal Road Safety Corps has alerted the public of the mischievous recirculation of an old video showing an erring tricycle rider who went on a face-off with FRSC patrol team after being caught destroying a patrol vehicle along Sapta Road, Benin, Edo State. The Corps explained that the staff involved in the, act, in the incident recorded in July this year has been adequately disciplined in accordance with FRSC regulations at the instance of the Corps Marshal, Dr. Bubuyi Oyeyemi. The Corps Marshal has also warned personnel to deploy a maximum level of civility in arresting offenders. The FRSC cautioned perpetrators of such media propaganda to desist from heating up the quality at this sensitive moment. And away from Nigeria, the ECOWAS Election Observation Mission in Guinea and its partner, the African Union, have both described Sunday's Guinean presidential election as largely peaceful and transparent, but not without some flaws and notable mishaps. In a press conference jointly addressed by the heads of the ECOWAS mission and that of the AU, the groups acknowledged the high sense of responsibility demonstrated by all stakeholders in the election. They concurred on the early opening of the polls, the relatively high turnout of voters, and a peaceful transition of each phase of the voting process, culminating in a collation of ballots at polling centers. The heads of the ECOWAS and AU election missions, who were both former prime ministers of their respective countries, spoke in French and gave some knocks as well to the process. They described the high level of tension and violence during the pre-election campaigns exacerbated by the foul messages of hate from the two major political parties in Guinea. 
The groups also frowned at the seeming unprofessional acts by staff of the electoral body who exhibited noticeable ignorance of key voting protocol. Both ECOWAS and the AU, however, agreed that these flaws do not impact significantly on the general conduct of the election and asked Guineans to remain calm and for the parties to accept the outcome of the election. Let's now have a bit of sports and Tamara Biwe will guide us. Special advisor to the president on sports and former international Daniel Amokachi says federal government is poised to improve sports and sporting activities in the country. Amokachi stated this at a football talent hunt for young players, which is ongoing in Abuja, tagged next Niger football superstar. Trying as much as possible to create a lot of platform where the youth can, 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 can benefit from it. And that's why our number one priority is to make sport business. Meanwhile, Deaf Sports Confederation is putting finishing torches for the second African Deaf Football Confederation scheduled to hold in Abuja on December 15, 2020. The championship, which sees the convergence of delegates from 45 African countries, will also witness Deaf Sports Leadership Seminar as well as strategic planning for the Technical Executive Committee. We're using this medium to thank the Honorable Minister and appreciating his efforts. It has not been easy, but through him and his support, we could host all African countries here in the MKU Abiola Mimbo Stadium. In handball, with the Prudent Energy Premier League set to begin at the velodrome of the Moshu Abiola National Stadium, 19 players of Canopilla's handball team have undergone COVID-19 tests. The samples of six officials and the team driver were also taken, with results expected in 24 hours. In the UEFA Champions League, Allianz Arena comes alive as six-time UEFA Champions League winners and cup holders Bayern Munich begin their title defense against Atletico Madrid on Wednesday. Other parents will see Manchester City square up against Portuguese giants FC Porto. Former champions Liverpool travel to Johan Cruyff Arena for a duel against Dutch side Ajax, while 13-time champions Real Madrid lock horns with Shakhtar Donetsk. Samara Ebiwe, NTA News. We must continue to speak up against rape and rapists. That's Network News this Tuesday. We sincerely apologize for not rejoining our Lagos Network Center as earlier introduced. Thanks for watching. Do have a good night rest.